If you asked a random person on the street what the best attributes for a holiday destination are, they'd probably ask you to leave them alone. But if you pulled a gun on that person and beat them over the head with it, they might list fun, excitement and not getting threatened by strangers as their top priorities. That's why for some reason today we're in Bowen, which despite being about as exciting as a kangaroo kicking you in the ghoulies, is routinely listed as one of the must-see destinations on the east coast of Australia. But hang on. Bowen subsists primarily on agriculture, coal mining and boring the ever-loving shit out of everyone that visits it. How is it that somewhere so unbelievably dull is so sought after, and why does such an astonishingly uninteresting place even exist in a world where most people's attention spans last about as long as a TikTok video? Well, let's find out. Bowen has been unceremoniously dumped in yet another dry tropical savanna, and it's the kind of place where the sun hates you so much that manufacturing melanomas has become one of the town's primary industries. The most prominent landmark in the area is Mount Cheese Man, just to the north, which I can tell you from experience does not look like cheese or taste anything like a man. Nuzzled in between the mountain and Bowen lies the Don River, and if rivers give you a stiffy but moisture makes you iffy, then you'll be pleased as punch because the Don's drier than a dead dingo's donger. The town was founded as Port Denison in 1861 after George Dalrymple's expedition to fuck up North Queensland had mapped the area a year prior, and it carries the distinction of being the first place up here where the natives were violently dispossessed of their land. Good job, Bowen. For a very short period of its history, it was North Queensland's most important port until people discovered that there were about a million other places on the north coast that were much more fit for purpose, and since then the economy has been mostly based around tomatoes, mangoes, salt and old people. If all this sounds boring to you, that's because it is. I couldn't find even a sliver of information regarding any interesting stories that have ever happened in Bowen. In fact, the town seems to pride itself on being excruciatingly dull, and as soon as you step foot in the CBD, it pegs its pointless existence squarely at your face like an angry little monkey. So what then draws so many visitors to the sort of place that wears boredom as a badge of honour? What on earth does Bowen harbour that most other places don't? The answer to that, my friend, is the beaches. Bowen is pretty much the gold standard of beautiful bays, and if beaches were supermodels, then I'd be on my knees begging for even a whiff of Bowen's sandy blue butt cheeks. It turns out that unlike most places that pride themselves on being relaxed when in all actuality they're just fucking boring, Bowen is the epitome of relaxation. And the fact that you can't finger the water because there's about a million things in the ocean that want to kill you makes you lust after these magnificently moist patches of pristinity even more. You don't need to spend $400 on a scuba diving trip to see coral here because it'll grow on just about any hard surface it can find. Every single rocky crevice has a nook or a cranny where you can surreptitiously insert yourself that's completely bereft of other people peeping at you, and every compact cavity you encounter is teeming with life. Beaches like these are a rarity in today's hyper-urbanized world, and the beauty of Bowen's ample bosom is quite frankly astonishing. I can tell you're already obsessed with the coral-filled coves of Bowen, but let me tell you, dear viewer, you're not the only one. Just about every hotel in town has a name that relates to the beach, such as Ocean View, Queen's Beach, Tropical Beach, Beachfront and Beachside, as well as things you might find on the beach, such as sand, bays, coves, harbours and backpackers with a better reefer. Bowen might have a 3 out of 10 personality, but it's a 10 out of 10 in looks, and by God, even if the place were filled with crack addicts and syphilis, I'd still try to diddle it. Though the local populace seems to be bereft of drug addiction, I can't say the same for the local animals. Driving along one of Bowen's back streets, I found some of the strangest looking dogs I've ever seen in my life. They let out bleats instead of barks and seemed to be hellbent on eating leaves and sucking my fingers, which was very weird and a little bit hot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ah! Oh, fucking cunt. Don't do that. <laughs> fucking weird. Hello, mate. Ooh, what happened to your head? Oh, what the fuck happened to your head, mate? Oh, why have you got holes in your head? That's fucked up. After having my finger sucked on in a manner I haven't experienced in at least six months, I ventured further into town to be pummeled by Bowen's ferocious inanity. One of the attractions the town has to offer are murals that are painted on a great many buildings, the most prominent of which are plastered all over the water tanks that sit on a rocky knoll overlooking this homunculus hamlet. They're big, they're beautiful, and they're behind a locked gate so none of you degenerates are able to put your dirty hands on them. There's also something that seems to be missing. Can you see what it is? Tell me, dear viewer, what do you think is completely, blindingly absent from these illustrations? Can you see it here? How about here? These guys can't see it, they're looking the wrong way. Have a think about it, and we'll come back to it later. Often small towns like these will latch onto literally anything that gives them a bit of clout, and Bowen's no different. Depending on who you ask, Baz Luhrmann's 2008 film Australia is either too long and very tedious, or too long and completely unwatchable, but Bowen isn't a place that cares about critics. 
this rather splendid old pub was transformed into the Territory Hotel to depict 1940s Darwin even though just up the road there's a fucked up abandoned old drinking hole that I would say is much more suited to representing Australia's most unpleasant capital city. Bowen's so proud of having a small part of a shit film made here that the town's dedicated three massive signs at the information centre to just that. It could be said that a single paragraph is far too much information for a film that's both as long and as boring as watching grass grow, but hey, who am I to judge? My films are just as atrocious as that bloated pile of self-aggrandizing nonsense. Speaking of self-aggrandizing, we've got a big thing here. Bowen proudly hosts Australia's Big Mango and boy is it bulbous. This excessive example of phony produce was stolen in 2014, that's right, stolen, and the nation's media outlets ran wild with the story because apparently nothing particularly interesting ever actually happens in this country. It was revealed a day later that the whole charade was a marketing stunt by the South African chicken chain Nando's, whose nearest restaurant is over 200 kilometers north of Bowen. I suspect the person who came up with that idea no longer has a job. Indeed, Bowen is very protective of its mangoes, but there's a bit more propping up local jobs than just delicious fruit. Although the steely grip of time has strangled Bowen's industry almost to death, there's a heap of big black dirty holes about now in Western Collinsville that provide much needed sustenance for the town's ailing employees. These are coal mines and they're situated in the northern part of the Bowen Basin, the largest coal deposit in Australia. The dirty dark detritus that's dug up here gets sent by rail to the Abbott Point coal loading terminal just north of Bowen, and this is literally as close as I could get to it. You're not allowed within 10 kilometers of the port because for some reason people try to protest against dredging the Great Barrier Reef in order to export massive amounts of a mineral responsible for more than a quarter of worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. You won't find a mention of that in town, however. Bowen needs to keep up its facade of being a mega for tourists, but in doing so it inevitably has to hide some of the darker parts of its story. You remember those murals from earlier? Well, the answer to the question of what was missing is black people. The man who settled Bowen, George Dalrymple, did so with a complete disregard for the local Aboriginal population and went about it with violence and an iron fist. Two of Bowen's main streets are named after native police officers who were known for their indiscriminate and abhorrent killings of Indigenous people. Now I'm not saying they should be plastering these facts in 20 foot high letters on the water tanks, nor am I saying that Bowen is a town of 10,000 racist white people, but surely this is a story more deserving of three billboards at an information centre than a shit movie made by a very fucking average director. The violence of colonisation is an unpleasant and difficult story to tell, but when the truth calls, someone needs to be there to pick up the phone and listen. There are many things that Bowen is not. It's not environmentally conscious, it's not particularly interesting, and there's more fun in a Tabasco enema than anything this town has to offer, but despite all that, there's a ridiculous sublime charm to it that's impossible to resist. It might try to hide the nastier parts of its existence, but if you can close your eyes and pretend not to hear the dying screams of the Great Barrier Reef, then as far as vacation destinations are concerned, this place is pretty goddamn close to perfect. Good on you, Bowen, it feels a bit dirty, but you won me over. If beautiful beaches don't buckle your knees, if the sirens of the city put you at ease, if you get unsettled by a cool ocean breeze, then I have four words for you, my friend. Don't go to Bowen. And now, an acrostic sink quain. Bowen. Ocean is all. With steadfast defiance, each blade of grass will tell no story. Naked bliss.